Hello there, it's Jennifer McGuire for Studio Calico. In today's video, I want to show you a little bit about the shadow inks from Hero Arts, and Studio Calico now carries these. And I use them to create both this layout, some of the stamping on this layout, and also this card. So I'll show you uh, the inks and talk about how they work and what makes them special as we create these cards. And I'll be using the March kit along with some of the add-ons that they have right now. They're really great colors. So this is one of the stamps that's in one of the March add-ons. I love this stamp. I love that you can create a border out of it or you can create a whole background, which I'll show you a few things with it. So these are the Hero Arts shadow inks. There are two different types of shadow inks. There's the soft shadow ink, which is on the left, which Hero Arts has had for a while. And then the new mid-tone shadow inks, which are on the right, which are a little more vibrant. And these colors go together really well. Now these inks are very unique. Um, they're dye inks, but they've got some special properties, which I'll show you. Now along the bottom here, I used one of the darker shadow inks, one of the mid-tone inks. This one's called Pool to stamp that image. And you can see it's kind of splotchy right now. However, when this dries, it'll dry nice and smooth. It kind of feathers out and gets really even and gives you a nice crisp image. And you can see on the right, that's what it dries to. So something you need to keep in mind with the color, the color will kind of soften. However, this is an advantage because when you have images such as this one that have a lot of solid area, this will smooth out all those splotches that you sometimes get with other inks. So here you can see this is the soft pool, which is one of the lighter shadow inks. And you can see on the left, it's when I first just stamped it. On the right is what it looks like after it dries. It's really nice and smooth and even. And really, I haven't found any other inks that end up drying to give you a nice, uh, solid, clear, not splotchy looking image, especially when you're using ones with solid areas like this. These inks work really well with Studio Calico images because there are a lot of solid images in theirs. And so these are just perfect um, partner for those stamps. So I'm using the soft brown for that first one. You can see how splotchy it is, but when this dries, it'll look nice and even and smooth. And this next one that I'm going to stamp is the darker shade of the brown, which is the Cup of Joe. So I have the soft brown and the Cup of Joe. This one is Field Greens, which is our mid-tone green, the darker green. And I'll stamp that. And then next I'll stamp the soft leaf, which is the lighter um, soft green. So you can see how these all go together quite nicely. And as these dry, these will smooth out. And I'll show you that in a few minutes. Now, these inks are like other dye inks that they'll um, absorb into the paper and look really nice. However, they will kind of smooth out unlike other inks. Another nice thing about these is you can do watercolor on this and they won't bleed. You can use your Mr. Hueys and you don't have to worry about it. These really will stay nice and true um, to their image. So here I've just kind of stamped a few different ones. This was soft pool and now I'm going to do the pool. And you can see with the stamp and the shadow inks you can create a great background pattern. You could do a whole page like that. Now I want to show you another stamp, this round one here behind my, my title. This is one from one of the March kits also. And this one is a great example for shadowing. So I'm gonna to skip to this stamp now and we'll come back to those strips in a minute. I'm using the soft pool, which is my favorite of all the shadowings. It's a nice soft pool color. And I'm going to stamp this onto some white cardstock. Now, when I first stamp this, you'll see that it's splotchy, that big solid area in the center. It's splotchy, but you'll end up seeing that it dries nice and smooth. So this stamp that has that big solid circle is a great example of where these inks come in handy. If you did this with other inks, chances are you would have a lot of unevenness that will stay even as it dries. Now I'm going to actually stamp this three times and then cut it apart and layer it together. So next I'm stamping it in the pool ink. I'm not really caring about getting that center smooth here or getting it inked well because I'm going to cover it with the one that I already did. But you will see over time that all that will smooth out. And then finally, I'm using Cup of Joe for the back of this. So I'm just going to cut these out and layer them together. I think cutting and layering stamped images is a great way of making it really stand out, and it's something that you can't do with stickers or other things. Now, you could use a punch or a circle cutter. I just eyeball it with my scissors. I think it works good enough, and I don't think anybody will ever notice that's not perfect. So there you can see that I've layered the soft pool in the center, the Cup of Joe circle around it, and then the pool circle around it. And in this close-up picture, you can really see how that pool area just smoothed out really nicely to give you a nice, solid area, something that's unique with these inks. Next, I'm going to go to those strips. You can see the strips that I have there with that zigzag um, stamp that we used earlier. I'm going to now add these to the layout. 
I'm using some background paper that is in one of the kits and I'm also going to use some strips that I cut from some of the papers from the various kits that um, that we have for March. Now for these I love to cut strips along the pattern. So this was like a herringbone patterned uh, paper and I cut it right along the pattern so you get these really unique looking strips. And I did the same with this plaid paper also. I just took a fun little mix and then I also have this pack which was included in one of the kits and it's got these great craft borders and it also actually includes some felt borders also. So I'm going to just dig through here and pick out one that works for uh, the scrapbook page. Now these would be great for cards too especially some of the banners that are in here and such. So a lot of fun things in the set. So now back to the page. I decided to do some circle photos to go along with it and I've kind of scattered them around here. You'll see this opening up here. I'm going to put my journaling right over that but right over that space. So now I've got my little strips and you can see they've all dried nice and smooth. And I'm just going to cut them um, along the V's of the pattern. Now when I put these down, I'm going to put some of them flat with regular adhesive and I'll put some down with foam adhesive. Just gives a lot of interest by just changing it up that little bit. Now when I do this, I find I have a hard time lining strips up, making things straight. I, I don't know what my, my issue is. So my little trick is I use a T-ruler to make sure that it's straight. So I just have this inexpensive T-ruler. You can get them off supply stores. And I'm going to use this to help glue them down. So I've glued the brown on the left. Now I'm going to take this piece of brown and glue it on the right. And I'm not actually using the whole strip behind the photo so I can save that little bit of centerpiece for another project. No sense wasting it behind the photo. So now I have the two sides lined up. And I use this T-ruler for everything, especially on scrapbook pages. So I went ahead and added lots of these strips along the page, along with some of the pattern paper strips that you saw me cut out before. And then I also added some fun embellishments to it, some stickers and some doodads that are included in the kits. And here's another tip for you. This sticker sheet came in one of the kits, and I really like the font in it. However, it was kind of light for my page. So I'm just using a marker. Here I'm using a Copic marker to color each of the letters the color that matches my layout best. You could use your Mr. Huey's. You could use an ink. Um, just make sure that it is heat set before you try to peel them up so that they don't smear. But I'm just going to use my Copic marker just to color these to match my page. So I've added those to the page and then I've got these Satan crystals. This is included in one of the add-ons. I really like these because they're very different than regular um, gems or rhinestones that you can include. They're not as blingy and they match perfectly with all the papers that come in the kits. So I'm just going to add a few of those on here. So here's the final layout. You can see all my circle photos added, my little embellishments. I use some little um, word stickers that are included on some of the sheets, and then of course the shadow ink stamping. Next I wanted to show you a card just using some of those scraps that I saved, and I did this again using pieces from the kits. These little flowers are from the um, kit that Maggie has with Studio Calco for her class. So this is the Bubblegum Hero Arts Shadow Ink. It's a little bit brighter than the others, and I really like it. And I'll stamp this, and you'll see it's kind of bright and kind of uneven at first. But again, we'll let it smooth out, and it'll be nice and um, perfect. So I've added that along with a few other strips onto my card with foam dots, and I'm using some glossy accents to add these little flowers onto here. And you can see how you get a shadow when you add those strips with foam dots. Much more interesting than just stamping it directly down or gluing it flat. So I'll add these flowers onto here. That glossy accents will hold through the mail too, which is nice. Now to create little leaves for those flowers, I'm going to show you a trick that I've shown you before in these videos. But I punch a circle, then I put the circle back into the circle punch and punch again. And that creates these little cat eyes or these little leaves that are perfect for any flower. So the bigger punch you use, the bigger um, leaf you'll get. It's just a fun tip and a great way to add that little, um, little something to a flower that kind of gives it a little more interest. And finally, I'm going to use this stamp set for my greeting. It's in one of the add-ons, and I love these Studio Calico alphabets. They do a great job with alphabets. And you could, I've showed you in other video, shown you in other videos how you can line up your greeting and stamp them all at once. But here, I'm just going to do each letter individually because I'm not really sure how I want it to end up. But what I'm going to do is start with the O of hello first so that I can make sure that I don't run out of room. 
um, going the other direction. So I'm going to stamp the O first, and just put it right in the bottom corner of my acrylic block. That keeps me from pressing too hard and also makes it so that I don't have to knock my embellishments with my, my block. So I've done the O and then I'll go work backwards and do the L, L, E, H. And that way I can kind of scatter them and make them fit in the space that I have. And there you have it. I used the Cup of Joe ink for that too so that it would match the strip on the bottom. I hope this video showed the fun that you can have with Hero Art Shadow Inks and how they work great with Studio Calico kits. If you have any questions, please visit studiocalico.com. Thanks for watching.